In this video, I'm going to show how to make an experience like this in the Ordinary Objects Editor, show the essential features and the overall workflow. Okay, let's start set up our experience. First, we're going to add a plain anchor. Anchors are special objects that follow the gaze of the device. The relationship between the anchor and the device is represented by this blue line. When I start moving my phone around, I can see that the anchor follows the gaze precisely and therefore I'm able to place this anchor anywhere in my scene. Selecting the anchor, I can see that there is a prototype panel on the right and a design panel. The design panel shows me that this anchor will detect or intersect surfaces like the floor, which is currently uh, ticked on, and it can also intersect with a wall, ceiling, table, seat, door, window, others that are unclassified or not classified, or any. But this means if I now move or rotate my device, I can see that the anchor can also follow on the wall. If I would turn wall off, the anchor would now not be possible to place on the wall anymore, which is then represented by a white line. For now I'm gonna click wall back on, but I'm gonna deselect everything else. This detail of our editor allows you to take full control over the first moment of your experience. It allows you to design this crucial moment of how to make the first contact with the physical space. Now let's add our first 3D object. I'm going to select the anchor and choose custom in the top. I can now select any GLB with texture resolutions until 2K and simply add this or upload it to my scene. The clock that I added now automatically snaps to the anchor. The new object has a modified design panel with a size and an option to turn shadows on and off. Every object comes with an on start trigger that is automatically executed at the start of each state. Every on start trigger also by default comes with an auto transform action. The auto transform action is responsible to position an object in space. The anchor parameter of the auto transform action is set to the object anchor. This means that the controlled object will snap to or anchor to the object anchor. The position, rotation and scale are represented through the transform gizmo. Manipulating the position of the object through the gizmo will be represented within the auto transform action. The lazy option allows you to control how fast an object will follow its anchor object. If you move the device, you can see that the clock will slowly follow the anchor point on the wall. You can play with these parameters to make the movement fast or instant, or slow, or more smooth behavior. Let's add the interaction to lock the anchor and clock on the wall. First, I'm gonna select the clock. In the prototyping panel, I will add a proximity trigger. Adding a trigger to an object means that this object will now start listening to certain events. The proximity trigger has three parameters. Event, which can be enter or exit. A two parameter, which defines the object the distance is calculated to. And the distance. Notice that the yellow line indicates the threshold when the proximity trigger will execute its actions. I want to set up this experience so once the user gets closer than two meters to the clock, I will lock the clock on the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a set anchor action to the proximity trigger. And I set this action up so it controls my anchor. For better readability, I'm gonna rename the anchor to surface anchor. Notice that when you select an object, you will not only see the actions that are assigned to the object, but also backlinks to triggers and actions that do affect this object. You can now try out the experience simply by moving the phone closer to the clock. Notice that as soon as the device is within the threshold of the proximity trigger, 
the blue arrow that was pointing into the scene, indicating where the anchor would follow the gaze, is now gone. Also indicating that the anchor is now locked at the wall. With this, I completed the first interaction of locking my experience in space. Let's go ahead and try this on the target device. After the login, the companion shows all available flows. Every flow will start from the base state and transitions to new states will happen automatically. You can see that the clock follows the gaze of the device exactly how I designed and simulated it in the editor. Long press with two fingers on the screen will restart the flow. Long press with three fingers will go back to the overview. This is a good moment to create a new state. I'm using states to create flows of an experience and build out the experience organically. I already have the proximity trigger set up to lock the anchor. So I'm gonna add the change state action to the same event. The change state action has two parameters, the state it will change to and the delay. When you click on the select state dropdown, you can create a new state from here. A new state was now added to the hierarchy panel. When I'm selecting the new state, I see that this state is an exact duplicate of the previous state. Notice that the rollback function will automatically trigger once you jump from state to state, resetting all manual movements of the device and active actions. In order to match the editor experience with a user's experience once they play through this prototype on their device, you can use the transition function of the change state action. The transition function will automatically transition the position of the anchors and the device from one state to the next. Let me show you how this works. First, I select the base state, rotating the device so I can see the clock at the position where I want it. Once I recreate the movement of a user going closer to the clock, you will see now that the change state action prompts to transition to state. If I press and transition to the state, the position of the device and the position of the anchor are now in the last known position when I left the previous state. Even if I press rollback, the anchor and the device will stay in this position. Going back to base has the expected behavior of starting in the original configuration. If you jump to the following state now, the device and the clock will be at the expected position. To keep an overview of states and their functionality, you can rename them. I will call this state selection. Now we can continue building out our experience in the selection state. First, I'm gonna remove the proximity trigger as I don't need this anymore. But I will add a set anchor action to the on start trigger of the clock element in order to keep my anchor in this position. In this part of the experience, I want to create a dynamic interaction of selecting this object. First, I'm gonna add a new custom object. In this case, I created the UI element in Figma that I can export as a PNG and import into our software. I can then rotate it and move it in the right position. And I use the scale parameter of auto transform to hide the object on start of the state. To achieve a dynamic interaction, I will select the clock element and add a while hover trigger. The while hover trigger is inspired by traditional 2D UI elements and will execute and reward the actions assigned to it. By default, the while hover and long hover trigger work with the main device pointer input. In this case, the gaze of the device. I want to make the ring slightly scale up and start rotating. For this purpose, I'm adding a pop action to the while hover trigger. Notice that since I added the pop action to the while hover trigger that is hosted by the clock, it automatically starts animating the clock element. 
In order to assign this pop action to the clock, we can simply change the control object to the Rim UI. The pop action immediately changes its appearance with an arrow on the top right, indicating that it controls a different object. Since the scale of the Ring UI is very small, and I'm only scaling it up a little bit, I cannot see any change behind the clock. So I change the values to be a bit slower, and only to one iteration. Notice that every time I change a value, the animation will start from the beginning, previewing its effect. Adding an outbound as an ease will add a nice motion, making it feel more dynamic. I also want this ring to slowly rotate to indicate a time component of this interaction. In order to do that, I'll go back to the clock and add a spin action that again first controls the clock. I will change this to the ring UI. It will then show me a rotating motion. I'm gonna go ahead and change these values. I want it slightly longer only one iteration again, and instead of pendulum, just default, which means it just goes in one direction. This looks great, and I'm ready to create a new state. We have completed the visual part of the interaction. Now we can add a long hover trigger to seamlessly transition into the next state. Each time the user looks away from the object, the internal counter of the long hover will be reset. Let's go ahead and add a change state action to the long hover. Again, we create a new state based off of the current state, which now is represented by a selection and a counter 1 in the hierarchy. Before I transition into the next state, I want to quickly highlight the hover interactions. In order to trigger the transition event, we can press rollback, see all the animations, and then be prompted to transition to the next state. If I press roll back and I move the device, none of the hover actions are currently being executed. Once I move the device back so the gaze hovers over the element, I will see all actions play accordingly. Now let's transition into selection one. In order to keep a good overview, I will rename this state to calendar. Now I don't need the ring anymore, so I will remove the actions, making the ring automatically scale back so it's small and hides behind the clock. Now I can add more element for my design of the third state. I add another custom asset, again a PNG exported from Figma, and modified so it's correctly displayed. Once I position the day card, I can go ahead and add more of my elements. Using rollback, you can observe the motions caused by the action. If you would like to create a transition for the day card, where it appears from behind the clock, but not want to create a pop action, you can copy the element, go to the previous state, select an object in the hierarchy, and paste the copied elements. Notice that pasted elements will have a counter at the end of their name. Remove this counter so the editor is able to transition parameters of actions between states. You can now simply move the object to a different location in a previous state, change the scale, and observe the transition when going to the next state. Notice that there are common issues with rendering in 3D. If you want to avoid objects in the front being hidden by objects that should appear in the back, you can manually adjust the sort order of all objects. We have now covered the most important aspects of how to use our editor and the core functionality. 